the streets of West London. Night time, it's snowing, and there are only a few days left till Christmas. Who are you talking to, Kev? The audience. I'm telling them where we are and what we're doing. Brilliant. Could you update me as well? Well, Matt, that building right there is the Tachycardic Plaza, where Rick Allenman is apparently holding Santa Claus hostage. I see. We need to get in. Only I'm not really sure how a terrorist is going to react to us two bowling up and asking for Santa back. Plus, I think there's a Christmas party in there tonight. Only it's got a private guest list. Mm, Tricky, Kev. And on top of everything else, I really don't like the look of that eight-foot doorman. What? The short lad in the hat? No, Matt. The guy next to him. The enormous, muscle-bound, angry doorman who looks like three Carl Terminators stuffed into one suit. Ah, he's awfully big, Kev. And hairy. How are we going to get past him? Hang on, looks like these two other men are trying to get in. Let's see how he greets them. Oh, good evening, young man. I wonder if... What the... Whoa! Now, now see here, my good man, you simply can't... Oh! He seems easily irritated, Kev. I agree. Wait, where's he going? Oh, yeah, he's walking away. And now he's vaping. Maybe he's on his tea break. I think you're right, man. Look, that far smaller and more amicable looking man has taken his place. He's even smiling. Let's go and introduce ourselves. Okay. Evening, gents. Welcome to t- Tachycardic Plaza. What name were it? Oh, hi. I'm Matt and this is Kev. Hello. We do a little show called Cafe Noir. Right, that's it. What? I am fed up with you mispronouncing the name. Give me a hand. Here you go, Kev. What do you want with it? This. I'm tattooing the name and logo of our show onto the back of your hand in the hope that it might help you to remember it. There. Finished. What do you think? Oh, cool. Thanks, Kev. I love it. What do you think, Dorman? It's really grand as that, only I don't much care who you say you are. There's only one person left I'm expecting on to guest list, so unless either of you is named to Danny Peaks, I can't let you inside. Sorry, to lads. That's rotten luck, Kev. I'm not sure I can do a believable Danny Peaks voice. I agree. Hang on, I've got it. Did you say Danny Peaks? Aye, I did. Where there's muck, there's brass. Well, I think it must be a misprint, because I'm Danny and he's Peaks. Right, Matt? Why are you winking at me, Kev? Because the last name on the guest list is Danny Peaks. So if I'm Danny and you're Peaks, then it would mean we could get into the party. Oh, I get it. Nice one. Kev's right, Dorman. He's Danny and I'm Peaks. We're banjo players from Woking. Why did you add the bit at the end? I'm committing to the performance, Kev. It'll help make the lie more believable. I see. Yeah, I suppose it could be a misprint on t- guest list where they forgot to and... Hey, up to a minute, though. <gasps> if you two really are banjo players, where's your banjos? Oh, that's easy. We left them in Woking. Nice one, man. I suppose that checks out. Hey, up to a minute. <gasps> then what were all that gaff about Kev, Matt and t- Cat Noir? Why did you get t- tattooed just now? Um, I just wanted to capture this moment in a way I can be forever reminded. Mm. Ah, sentimental, are you? Well, me too, I suppose. Well, all that checks out then. In you go, sit, lads. Well, that was a bit of luck. It's a Christmas miracle, Kev. Welcome to the second part of a Cat Noir Christmas special. This episode's called It's a Wonderful Christmas to Die Hard, Carol. Bit of a mouthful, if you ask me. Anyway, enjoy the show. Oh, oh, it's still with me then? Well, I thought maybe a point of view might have gone inside with tip principal cast now, you know. Not focus on a one scene character who believed he finished his lines for t- nah. This is awkward. Only I've got now more written in my script. Well, I suppose I can tell you about myself. I'm Dorman Steve. My friends just call me Steve, although ironically, my surname's actually Dorman. I've been working to the door for about ten years or more. Oh, hello. Can I help you? Yeah, hello. It's me, Danny Peaks. Wishing you the best of the blooming season. Now, about 30 years ago this very night, I was very much in love with my sweetheart, Carol. Inseparable we was. I'd even planned to marry her. Is this going somewhere? I'd come into possession of my late grandma's engagement ring and I had it in me pocket, waiting for just the right moment to ask Carol to be mine. What happened? Well, about halfway through the party, I told Carol I loved her. It made her so happy she cried, and I knew then and there it was the right moment. So... While she was wiping her eyes on a tissue, I got down on one knee, 
pulled out my dead grandma's ring and waited. Only, when she looked up from her tears, she just turned and walked away. I've never seen her since. Well, that's a real cheery tale of Christmas gloom and doom and no mistake. Why are you telling me? Because, my old son, after waiting 30 long and empty years in the hope of seeing her face again, a friend slash enemy of mine says that Carol is attending a party here tonight at this very plaza. So, after scratching a few backs, crossing a few palms with silver and breaking several chins, I managed to get myself on the guest list. So you should have the name Danny Peaks on your little book right there. Peaks, you say? No, no, no. Sorry to the lad, they've already gone inside. T- two of them there were. Hey, two of them? Aye, Danny and Peaks. T- banjo players. Well, I don't know anything about any banjos, but some it's not right. I'll tell you what. Since it's the season of goodwill, how about you show me an emergency exit I can break into so I can climb up through the ventilation system and take a gander at what's going on. Oh, I certainly. Follow me, Mr. Peaks. Thank you. You've been most helpful. Hello, it's me, Carol Trough. I only recently joined the company after a long stint abroad. I work in payroll. Nice to meet you, Carol. I'm Matt. This is Kev. Hello. We do a little show called... What's it called again, Kev? Oh, check your hand. Oh, yeah. Palm Noir. God damn. We're on the radio. Nice to meet you both. This is Mr. Tunguska. He owns the plaza. Wow, that's pretty cool. I'll say. Can I ask how much it's worth? I will never tell. Fair enough. Yes, and I'm Mr. Godwin. I work in marketing. I've been here about eight years. Hello. Good evening. Carol, do you mind if I ask, are you all right? You keep looking over to the door. Oh, it's a fair cop, Mr. Goodwin. Godwin. You see, about 30 years ago, I was with the man of my dreams. Inseparable we were. During a Christmas party, he told me he loved me for the first time, and I knew then and there he was going to propose to me. Caught me by surprise, he did. Made me well up, shed a couple of tears. Anyways, I dried my eyes with a tissue, but when I opened him again, he'd gone. Disappeared. I've never seen him since. Oh, that's really sad. What was his name? Danny Peaks. Oh. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry to hear what happened to you, Carol. I hope you've had time to heal. Thanks, Mr. Goodwin. Godwin. It's just that a friend of mine told Danny I'm back in town. Apparently he said he might stop by. Well, it's silly, I know. But a girl can hope. If he doesn't come here tonight, Carol, I can only hope it's not because someone's already used his entry on the guest list. Thank you. You're too kind. Meanwhile, these volivants are pretty good. Can I have the recipe, Mr. Tunguska? I will never tell. Probably should have seen that answer coming, Matt. Mm. Do you think there's anything you will tell, Kev? Good question. I'll try it. Mrs. Tunguska, is there anything you will ever tell? I will never tell. I think he's a man of his word, Matt. Well, I've had a bit of a tough evening too, as it goes. You see, earlier tonight, I was pestered on my doorstep by this incessantly annoying... Mr. Goodwin! Carola. Oh, please, no. I thought I recognised you, sir. Fancy seeing you here. Cool, you must not half love your Christmas song, sir. We were at it for a couple of hours earlier, weren't we, Mr Goodwin? Wow. You must have been horrible. Uh, Mr Godwin, and it was three hours you were singing for, even when I closed the door and shut my curtains. In fact, as I recall, you were still there singing after I'd left the house and set off for this party. You missed a few classics, sir, but don't you worry, I've got you covered. I'm the entertainment here tonight. Oh, terrific. I'll be singing him for you in a bit. I can't wait to see what happens next. <laughs> what the ladies, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, due to a lack of cooperation regarding the transfer of a stated amount of funds, I will be teaching the real meaning of Christmas by cancelling it. You will be witnesses. What the hell's going on? I'm guessing that must be Alan then, then. I reckon so. I don't like him pointing a gun at Santa Claus, though, Kev. Me neither, man. Mr Claus, if you could kindly walk toward that door in front of you and open it. <laughs> All right, all right. It's a conference room. Perfect. In you go. Let me out of here. Or you'll what? Whoa, oh, oh. Well, I suppose I don't know. I thought as much. Oh, and Mr. Claus? Yes? Nice suit. Thank you. It's made with magic and wonder. So am I. Woke. Woke. 
I work harder than you, train longer, think smarter. I'm more of a man than you'll ever be. I deserve this. Arrogance. Arrogance. Christmas edition by Woko. Oh. 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 I can't believe I'm squeezing myself through this ventilation duct. Now I know how a tube of toothpaste feels. Hold on. There's a crater over there. Let's lift you up and find out where I am. Well, yippee ki yay Father Christmas. Whoa, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, Daniel. How do you know my name? Well, every year I put you on the naughty list, but somehow every year your name gets crossed off and added to the good list. Oh, yeah. One of your elves is on my payroll. Listen, what's going on? <laughs> Bad men, Daniel. Trying to cancel Christmas. That's why I'm locked in here. How many? Three. One upstairs keeping watch, one in the vault, and the one who locked me in this room. Right, you leave this to me, Miles, sir. I knew I could count on you, Daniel. Where are you going? I'll start with the one upstairs. You just stay alive until I get back. Will do. Oh, 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 oh. I'll be honest, I've been to better parties than this. Yeah, me too. I know what you mean. Quiet. We could talk about Christmas parties all day, but I'm afraid work must intrude. Mr. Tunguska, I will need the access code to your computer. I will never tell. Wait a minute. Any information you get off our computers, they'll change it tomorrow. You won't be able to blackmail our executives. And who are you? It's me, Carol Troff, from Payroll. Well, Miss Troff, I am really not interested in your computer but I need access because I am interested in the $640 million in negotiable barrel bonds you have locked in your vault. And the computer controls the vault. Hang on. You want money? What kind of terrorist are you? Who said we were terrorists? Oh. Now I'm going to ask you again, Mr. Tunguska, and this time I feel it important to inform you that the gun pointed at your chest is no ordinary gun. One pull of this trigger will turn whatever I am aiming at into a turkey. My <gasps> goodness. Oh. I am going to count to three. There will not be a four. Give me the code. One. I'm not going to lie, Matt. I kind of want to see that gun fired. I know what you mean, Kev. Same here. Two. Well, this is all well and good, in it? But when are we going to sing Christmas songs? Will you shut up? Can't you see he's got a gun? Three. I will never tell. Well, I've never seen that happen before. I can't believe it, Kev. He actually turned Mr Tunguska into a turkey. I think I've finally found what I want for Christmas, Matt. I mean, Christmas is a time for singing, don't you all think? Oh, I've had enough of this. Excuse me. Yes. Would you mind silencing this one too? My pleasure. What? <laughs> oh, thank you so much. You've really made my Christmas. Don't mention it. Now, if you'll all excuse me, I need to radio down to the vault. Phil, this is Rick Allenman. Are you there? Negative. I'm afraid we lost Mr. Tunguska. Can you open the vault without him? Sure thing, Chief. There hasn't been a doorman I can't open. Good. Get it done. If you quit all your chatter, I can get my hands working on this keyboard faster. Splendid. Rick out. Do you think Danny will turn up then, Kev? If he does, he might not be too happy that we've used his entry on the guest list. But if he doesn't, there's an above average chance of Christmas being cancelled and us getting turned into turkeys. Hmm. Volivon? Yeah, go on then. <laughs> ah, finally free. Ventilation ducks are no way to travel. Oi, you! Oh, crap. Rumble before I finish dusting myself down. Do not move a muscle! In this hand, I have a very special gun that will turn you into a turkey with a single pull of the trigger! I see. Well, take a look at what i got in this hand. You have nothing in your hand! And what about this one? You have nothing in that hand either! That's right. <coughs> I don't need no fancy gun in my hand. That said, I will take your fancy gun. Nine, nine, nine. Now then, what's so special about it? Please do not 
turn me into the turkey. To be honest, I don't favour shooters much as a rule, but you got my interest in this one. Gobble, ah! gobble, gobble, gobble. Well, I've never seen that happen before. Gobble. It never ceases to amaze me just how many dangerous weapons there are on the streets of London, and the problem's only getting worse. Mind you, gives me an idea, though. If I grab this office chair and put the turkey on it, gobble, gobble. and take some paper out of this printer, and scribble a little note with this pen. Lovely. Now I'll just wheel the whole thing over to the lift, and send it all downstairs. There. That should be my response. Now to call the police. I don't want to do any time for this. Where's the phone? What's this? Who's in that lift? Gunther, is that you? Gunther? And a note. Now I have a turkey gun. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> What's so funny, Carol? It's just the sort of thing my old Danny would do. Yes, but who's Danny? Shh! I demand to know the meaning of this. Is there anyone else in this plaza beside us? Well, as a matter of fact, we were just saying, Mr. Allen, it's entirely possible that Danny Peaks is here and now he's got a turkey gun. All of you, stay here. I'm going up in the lift to find this Peaks. If any one of you so much as move, I will first turn you into a turkey, then into turkey burgers. Wait here. Come on, where's the old Bill? I'm not used to hanging around at a crime scene. Wait, speak of the devil. There's a police car outside. What's he up to? Getting out, walking up to the entrance, turning around again. I suppose from down there everything must look normal. I need to attract his attention. What's this? The window only opens a small way. Okay, Peaks, you need something to drop out of it. What have I got in my pocket? A bag of dry roasted peanuts? That'll have to do. I can only hope the distance increases the rate of force sufficiently enough to make the peanuts impact and draw police attention. Take cover, I think there's a sniper! No, no, no. This gag was done a few months ago. Ow, I got a peanut in my eye. Who threw that? It come from up there! He stopped. It worked. Hang on. Oh, please help. I'm an American called an American. There's a man downstairs with a turkey gun. He's taken us all hostage. Knock it off, Alleman. Everyone in London knows your face. I see. In that case, perhaps you would like to join the rest of us at the Christmas party. You seem to have me at a disadvantage. I'll put my gun down and drop a bag of peanuts out the window. This way. Do you really think we're going to make it out of this one, Kev? It's hard to say. I'm just hoping there isn't some massive bomb hidden down in the basement next to the vault. Yeah? Why not? Because we blew this year's stunt budget on the Ping Ming August Sunstone back in the summer. Oh, yeah. And not forgetting, of course, we would all be horribly killed. That wouldn't do. I've got a shopping delivery coming this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, I have found our uninvited guest, Danny. Danny. Hello, boys. Oh, so you must be Danny Peaks. Welcome to the party, pal. You want to buy some finger socks? Keep moving. Hi, Danny. Carol Trough, as I live and breathe. The only woman who ever mattered to me, other than my dear old ma. Careful, Danny. That gun he's got turns people into turkeys. What's your game, Alleman? What are you up to? I assure you all I have no interest in any of you or this building, save for the significant number of barrel bonds in its vault. Hang on. So you really aren't a terrorist, then? No, my dear. While the police are busy scrabbling about searching for a Christmas activist... I will be leaving here quietly with $640 million and Phil and Gunther. There's a massive plot hole here, though. What's any of this got to do with me, Matt or Cat Noir? Isn't it obvious? No, not really. I issued the threat and brought Santa here to lure you both. You see, when I leave shortly, I will need three corpses to be found among the ashes of a violent bomb explosion that will bring down the entire plaza. Oh, crap. 
so there is a bomb. Matt has the same size and frame as I do. Oh, thanks, Rick. Kev has the same shape and size as Gunther. I resent that. Well, at least when I've turned Gunther back into a human. And let me guess, Santa Claus is the same size as Phil in the vault. Precisely. When the police find three corpses in the wreckage of the former plaza, they will believe they have found their terrorists and that the threat is over. Mm, this still sounds a bit sketchy to me. Hang on. You mean you're planning to blow up this building with Kev, Matt and the love of my life in it? Oh, I'll miss you too, Danny. Yes, but what about me? I seem to get pestered by more than my fair share of misfortune, but this really takes the biscuit. Gobble, gobble, gobble. If you'd prefer, I could turn you into a turkey with a single click of this trigger. <laughs> ah. Why'd you run out on me that night when I went to propose to you then? I didn't. I opened my eyes and you'd gone. I hadn't. I was kneeling down in front of you, holding out an engagement ring. Was you? It never occurred to me to look down. And that's one of the reasons I knew I loved you. You never once did look down on me. Oh, Danny. Well, as nice as all of this is, I really must be going. So, if... Do you mind? I am talking to my woman. Honestly, some people. He was threatening me earlier, Danny. He was what? Yeah, he threatened to turn us all into turkeys, then turkey burgers. Oh, that's it. Come here! What the? Get off me! Uh, my gun! No! Ow! 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 Be careful, Danny! Yeah, look out for that massive window, Danny! Get off! Never mind! No, please. Let me live and I will split the money with you. Sorry, Alanman. No sequels. No! 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 Thieves. They're doing a number on the safe here. There's a bomb downstairs, and I think there's still a man in the vault. Oh, I sorted that. I got my best man on it. Had my best man on it. Who's that? That's you, Constable Tyrant. Do you want to buy some finger socks? Some what? Never mind. <laughs> well, everyone, I think the situation's back under control. Thanks, Thanks Danny. Danny. Oh, I'll go and free Santa. Hold me, Danny. Come here, sweetheart. Well, I've got something I want to ask you. Yeah? What's that? I've been carrying this around with me every day since I last saw you. Danny. Carol Trough, would you marry me? Uh, what are the options? <laughs> You have been listening to a Cat Noir Christmas special part two. It's a wonderful Christmas to die hard carol. Written, recorded, produced and edited by Matt Sanders and Kevin Childers. Give us a like, review and a subscribe wherever you heard us. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Cat Noir Podcast. Join us next time for more... Hang on a minute, Matt. I've got a text message from Mystic Crunch at the news team. He says we need to cut across live to Insert Nam here. Oh, well in that case, let's go live to Insert Nam here. Thanks, Matt and Kev. I'm here on the train platform where, owing to the magic of Christmas being saved, Santa Claus has brought me back in time by one episode for a final miracle. Santa, do you care to explain? Oh, oh, oh. Well, in, sir, in just a moment, Matt and Kev are going to go through that wall over there on their hunt for Alan Moon. That seems a little foolhardy. No time to explain it. Our job is to give that man over there more Christmases by preventing him from seeing it. Do you mean that angry-looking rail officer over there? That's right, insert. I want you to give him this. Sadly, that Christmas present. Hurry! Okay. Excuse me, can I have a word? What the bleeding hell do you want? I've got a lot of work to do, you know, including taking a closer look at those two suspicious men over there by that platform wall. That's right. You do work hard. It's why I want to give you this. What? What's this? It's a random slice of Christmas magic made happen by the very man himself. Of course, stone me. It's a book of poetry. Merry Christmas. Well, never have I seen words constructed in such a way as to light the darkness within my soul. The universe today has become far more complex than I have ever conceived before. 
and yet, at the same time, it has lit a flame that is already seducing my heart. Thank you, stranger. I will read this book cover to cover, and someday I will read it to my grandchildren during Christmases yet to come. And there we have it. One last unlikely happenstance, put right by the wonder of the festive season. Good night, all. Oh, 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 oh. Merry Christmas from Cat Noir.